So, Sanjay, look, I've asked this question before about Tucker Carlson. Does he want his viewers to live? Last night, he went on TV, and, you know, he, he, he flowered it up with, oh, I'm just asking questions, I'm just asking questions. But if you watched it, you were left with the impression that this guy with no medical degree was suggesting that vaccines are killing thousands of people. Now, I don't know why he did it. Again, maybe it's just to get attention, but I think we need scientists who we could have had on to talk about it. Doctors like you, please set the record straight. It's so reckless, John. It's, it's so dangerous what he's doing. And I hope, I'm glad you didn't actually show the clip because I think that's the wrong thing to do. Uh, I, I, you know, I can't tell with him whether he's just so smart or, or so dumb. I, I'm just not sure at this point, but it is very reckless and dangerous. What he's talking about is this system that is an open label system where anybody can basically uh, report an adverse event from the vaccine. Anybody can do that. And what he's done is he basically has looked at these open system uh, adverse reporting systems and said, hey, look, this suggests that 30 people a day are dying of the vaccine. Absolutely. Absolutely not true. First of all, let me just show you the graphic of the impact overall of these vaccines. We know that a certain number of people die every day for all sorts of different reasons. We also know, if you take a look there at that right curve, that the, the, after the vaccination program started, uh, death rates plummeted among the elderly. We know the impact of that. This is the same reporting system that basically found a one in a million likelihood of someone uh, you know, having an adverse event from the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. That's how they initially found that. These reports came in, CDC evaluates it, and they say, whoa, something going on here. Let's pause Johnson & Johnson. What Tucker Carlson is saying is that, you know, dozens of people are dying every day, and the CDC and FDA are turning a blind eye to it. It's absolutely 100% false. The problem is that it continues to stir up this vaccine hesitance or outright vaccine reluctance. It is so frustrating because... You know, we've been stutter starting our way through reporting on this pandemic for a year because instead of continuing to build the knowledge tree, we've had to continuously fact check and correct misinformation. It's been so frustrating as a scientific reporter, and it's still happening in the midst of what is arguably one of the greatest scientific achievements that we've had, in, you know, maybe ever, these vaccines, we are still stutter stopping our way through you know, what is happening here. We could be in much better position if it were not for people like Tucker Carlson who continue to, to embolden this vaccine hesitance. It's, it's really, you know, it's really very irritating. COVID, a disease that didn't exist two years ago, was the second or third leading cause of death in the United States. We have a chance to dramatically change that around. I have relatives in India who are sick. I have a relative who died for want of vaccines in other parts of the world. People are on their hands and knees begging for these vaccines. And here we are throwing shade at it in order to, to embolden this vaccine hesitance. So look, look at the science, look at the numbers, understand what that reporting system is, a reporting system that caught literally a one in a million problem it's not turning a blind eye to 30 deaths a day, which is what Tucker Carlson seemed to be suggesting. I want to ask you about relaxing vaccine patent rules. And as you just mentioned, you have family in India. You have lost family in India. You know the effects of doing this so that other countries can make their own generic versions of the vaccine instead of just being shipped doses. The president is now talking about this idea, endorsing this idea. The medical director of BioNTech just told us here on New Day that, that they will not increase available doses uh, because they will not, through this, be able to increase available doses in the next 12 months. Is that what you understand? I think the, the rate-limiting step that uh, Aslam Torechi and others have, have talked about is, is this idea that what is, what is really problematic here is do we have enough of the ingredients to actually make some of these vaccines? I mean, opening up the, the patent uh, protection so that people have access to that uh, intellectual property could be helpful. But I think when you play it out, and I've talked to several people about this in the vaccine manufacturing world, does it translate tangibly to more vaccines for people? So two issues. One is that that's not clear. You, you just you need to have the stuff, if you will, to make the vaccines. But two is, and I think this is a, is a really important point, is that you know if, if you look at India right now, and I think we can show how much of the first world has been vaccinated versus the third world. I mean, it's not even close uh, in terms of access of vaccines. But the reality is what is happening there is more of an acute crisis in terms of actually needing to stop viral transmission. 
need to stop it in, in the sense that, look, over 81% versus 0.3%. It's a number people should stick in the back of their minds in terms of the equity of the vaccine rollout. But right now, what needs to happen in India is stopping the transmission of the virus, which is why there's the stay-at-home orders right now. Uh, they need things like oxygen, hospital beds. Uh, the patient is coding, essentially. Vaccines are helpful, no question, as we just talked about. But uh, in, in the short term, these other things are probably going to be more important. Yeah, it's so acute right now, as you point out. Sanjay, thank you so much uh, for answering our questions. No, uh, John, go on. Yeah, I was just going to say, I, I'm sorry. I, just, I, mean, I wanted to thank Sanjay, but also just say, how heartbreaking and infuriating it is to hear you talk about losing relatives or having relatives sick for want of a vaccine that some guy goes on TV and throws shades on it. Really? Uh, I, I, you know, and, and Chanza, you don't get mad. Um, but I can see that it really, it really is pushing you over the edge. It, it, it's, it's so infuriating. I mean, I, I have to say, I, I, I look at the number of lives that have been saved, and, and it's something to really celebrate uh, these vaccines. Again, we showed that graph of the plummeting death rates in nursing homes. I mean, they were, they were where so many of these deaths were happening. And, and then I, I'm still getting questions from people who probably hear from Tucker Carlson or others even who, who then ask me, was well, it true the vaccine is causing people to die? And I just, it's, it's constantly correcting the record. How do we grow as a society and grow our knowledge tree if we have to keep doing that? It's, it's, uh -huh. it's yes, it's, yeah. it's, it's maddening. Yeah. It's very frustrating. Look, and the Murdochs have to answer for this. You know, Paul Ryan has to answer for this. A lot of people have to answer for this at this point because um, this is happening every night. Thanks, Sanjay.